This is the Blaze Radio On Demand. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-490-1099 or go to web.com slash radio. That's 800-490-1099. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. The Buck Sexton Show. We're joined by Vince Colonese. He is the Daily Caller's executive editor. He is at the DC Vince on Twitter. What's up, Vince? Hey, how you doing, Buck? Thanks for having me again. Oh, thank you, sir. Good to have you. So uh, you got an exclusive up on the Daily Caller. John Kerry, State Department funneled millions to his daughter's nonprofit. Oh, me, oh, my, what's going on? Well, you know, this is just one more one more story that somehow the State Department keeps on getting stuck with all of this, these corruption charges. Uh, but in this case, it's John Kerry, who, who did more than $9 million of, of State Department money, has gone through the Peace Corps and ended up in a nonprofit foundation started and, and run by uh, his daughter. And... You know, and this is something that was tracked down by the Daily Caller News Foundation. And you know, when we when they kind of went and asked a bunch of questions of, of everyone who was involved, everyone sort of denied wrongdoing. They were like, "Hey, there's no conflict of interest here. It's a great program. It's a it's called the Global Health Service Partnership, uh, which sends physicians and nurses to various third world countries." But in the process, there's a lot, there's many, many millions of dollars going to this group straight from the State Department to the Peace Corps to uh, this organization that uh, that is run by John Kerry's daughter. So, boy, don't you think that deserves scrutiny? You would think so. Uh, you know, wh- wh- what we keep seeing here is, is the Democrats, very powerful Democrats, either using government funds or using the guise of sort of charity and, and public works uh, or, or public good work I- in order to – uh, move money around and enrich themselves. I mean, this is kind of out of the Clinton Foundation playbook. And everyone needs to understand that whenever money goes to a charitable organization, people at that charity are getting salaries. Sometimes they're getting, you know, travel expenses paid to go to conferences all over the world. That only a percentage of that money is actually going to help anybody in the first place. Right. So, you know, and this this comes on the heels of you know, and people wonder why Donald Trump is succeeding. This comes on the heels of things like we saw over the past couple of years, the insider trading scandal in Congress, the notion that people with access, people with power, people with connections, people who use the resources of the federal government uh, or, or are, who are charged with actually governing those resources, use them to their own benefit, whether it's a direct benefit or it's sort of you know off to the side. You've even had you know guys like Robert Menendez, who's, who's, who's clearly one of the most corrupt guys in the Senate, uh, throwing softball questions to Hillary Clinton during questions that she has to face before Congress. So it's sort of amazing and, and actually upsetting that so many people are, are this close to apparent or perceived corruption, and now John Kerry and his daughter are in the thick of it, uh, thanks to some great, great reporting by the Daily Card News Foundation. Where is uh, Senator Menendez right now, by the way, on whether criminal charges are being filed? Or I, I actually haven't kept up as closely with that as I should have. Can you can you give us an update on that? Or if not, I'll, I'll have no, a team I mean, look I, I can't, nothing, nothing that um, nothing too detailed. I, I, I think Google's going to be your best your best bet here. But in general, um, the FBI report on this was very clear when it came out that that they, they considered this to be uh, pretty dramatic corruption and you know and this guy i mean up until a couple of years ago was considered to be you know that organization crew the center for responsibility and ethics in washington at one point considered ranked robert menendez among the most corrupt lawmakers in the country and then all of a sudden david brock the guy who runs media matters took over crew and they memory hold all of that sort of that past so it's sort of, it's it really is amazing sort of what's gone on not in just this election year but the past couple of years when it comes to um, 
political corruption. It's, it's, it's bad, and I think Americans really need to pay attention to it. And Catherine Watson, who's one of your reporters over at the Daily Caller News Foundation, has a piece up on how the FBI, this is all about these hearings that are going on about emails, the email server, email gate, all that stuff. The FBI tried to recover 27 Clinton emails back from Congress. What's What happened here? It's it, They basically, I guess, based on uh, Congressman Shavitz's account, they said that they were received 27 emails more than they should have, I guess, that the FBI had control of. And then the FBI realized that they had not wanted to send those specific 27 emails to Congress, and they were asking for them back. And I, I don't even know what the point is. I mean, Chaffetz said that this wasn't about classified material at all. It was just, you know, I guess it was routine. Chaffetz called it embarrassing material, but um, they they basically asked for documents back. And, you know, even at the news level, at the they call caller, we've been – We've been given documents by the government before who – and then like some government agency, and then they'll later be like, hey, we didn't want to give you all of that. Can you give it back to us? And we're like, oh, don't be ridiculous. This is, these are records that you had and you were in control of, and you know, if you want us to issue some redactions because you can come up with some personally identifiable information that's deserving of them, fine. We can negotiate that. But we're not going to give bad documents back to you. Don't be silly. Well, this is the way the, the, the government does things. I mean they, they still – they will confirm <laughs> things publicly. They'll, they'll have the commander in chief confirm things and then say, well, that's still classified. And you're like, but but the president <laughs> said it. Totally. It happens all the time. They're incompetent in the distribution of information. They're just, you know, so it's, you know, it's a big government. A lot of people make mistakes. And but we're, we're on the favor of transparency. We'd like to know more, not less. Where is the caller right now on the issue of Hillary's health? I mean, are, do you, look, we know that she's got pneumonia. That all looked bad. Do you guys, you have people looking into this, do you think there's more to this? Because this seems to be catching catching on well beyond the sort of fever swamps of the right-wing sites into just, no, there's some there's some stuff going on here. Here's what, here's, here's, the, here's the thing I'll say, and this is the way that we feel at the Daily Caller. You know, I mean, it's one thing to sort of be presented with a series of facts by like a presidential campaign in a vacuum. Hey, if they say, hey, our candidate's got pneumonia, you know, well, okay, that's pneumonia. That, that makes sense. So, you know, we'll report it. They, Hillary Clinton has pneumonia. The problem is that the lead up to us finding out that specific thing was involved. There was so much deception and and silence that once you get to actually like starting to reveal what's really going on, any good reporter at that point should be like a little bit stung by the fact that they've been crying wolf throughout the whole process and go, okay, look, I really want to believe you, but you've been so dishonest in your in your presentation the entire time about what's going on with Hillary Clinton. And now yesterday, all of a sudden, Bill Clinton and others are saying, actually, pneumonia is sort of just a minor ancillary problem. It wasn't that. It was that she's always dehydrated. She just doesn't drink water enough. What am I supposed to believe? So as a reporter and the reporters here at the Daily Caller, all, all we can do is sort of like tug on this and keep, keep asking questions about it and try and report out as much as possible. The New York Post yesterday had this piece saying that the Secret Service violated protocol um, and by not bringing her to a level one trauma center when she collapsed and instead bringing her to Chelsea's apartment. I put a call into the to the Secret Service. They're not really willing to talk about this anymore other than to say that they were fine sort of with their agent's behavior on, over the weekend. And they thought, you know, everything was sort of executed as it should have been, but they have no further comment. And, you know, from from my perspective, there's just so many more questions than there are answers involved with this, which seems so silly, right? Do we have the audio, uh, John, of, of everyone saying how Hillary had to power through this? Do we have that? John? No? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, 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 just play. play. This is like Robbie Mook, I think, talking about how Hillary powered through. Go for Why it. Why not tell the American people on Friday that she had pneumonia? Well, uh, Jake, she met with her doctor. Uh, she made a decision to just power through this. Um, as your opening segment mentioned, a, a lot of people on the campaign have been sick uh, the last few weeks, and we've decided to power through sometimes uh, to our own detriment. She was diagnosed with pneumonia on Friday. She decided to power through it. As I said, on Friday, she made a decision with her doctors to just power through this. Um, but why and... wouldn't you tell the voters? Do you think the voters don't have a right to know? Well, well, I think, look, uh, obviously uh, pneumonia is more serious than a, than a cold or a flu, but people often go into work uh, and continue to, to power through when they have pneumonia. Yes, she developed pneumonia. Yes, she tried to power through it. But it's not, you know, let's hold Donald Trump's feet to the fire. 
I, I, I do not believe, for somebody who is, this is a guy who makes his living going on TV and elsewhere and speaking, right? Communication is what this person does. I do not believe right. for a second that he's that at a loss for words, that he just has to say power through, like, what was that, seven times in a row in one interview? No. You know, if he I said it twice, some- I would think it was weird. <laughs> this is, they might as well have said Hillary had pneumonia, but she decided that we're stronger together. So we were just going to be stronger together while she had pneumonia and, and, and be stronger together after the pneumonia passed. I mean, that's what's going on there. You know that they had some hilariously corny PR meeting that morning. It was like, hey, okay, everyone who talks about this in public, we need to say power through. That's the, that, those are the, the words of the day today, power through. Because the idea is like, they're like, okay, we need to make her appear as strong as possible, right? That she's like suffering with this, but she's powering through. She's, she's got so much hard work to do for the American people, but not even a mortal illness can slow this woman down. And I mean, the same thing is true, by the way, of the water thing. She's so busy that she doesn't even have time to drink water. What are you talking about? By, by that definition, Marco Rubio would be the worst president of the United States because he just constantly drinks water, right? So that's, he, he would just never have time yeah. to actually govern because of all of his water consumption. You see how lazy Rubio is? The guy drinks water <laughs> left and right. It's crazy. No, I mean, but this is also, by the way, I think people... Uh, when they stop and and give it a, a moment's consideration, recognize that I mean Hillary Clinton travels everywhere and has now for decades with essentially an army of servants. I mean there, there are people tending to her every single need. Uh, she's incredibly wealthy. Clinton wrote in lifetime full level Secret Service protection for him and for her at a level that's I, I believe even beyond like what George W has. Uh, so he, he sort of changed that so that they would have the full complement of Secret Service agents at in, in perpetuity. And, and this notion that, you know, she's powering through anything. And what's so hard? Getting driven around, getting in a private jet? I mean, you know, the rest of the American people should be so lucky. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're prone to hilariously bad hyperbole, like the idea that they were dead broke upon leaving the White House and all of a sudden just came into many, 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 many millions of dollars. So – the claim, I think the biggest problem here is, is, in addition to whatever the answers are on the health question, the fact is, as I said before, the sort of the dishonesty and the veiling and the, and the, and the bias for secrecy that exists among the Clintons, and specifically Hillary, it's just every, it doesn't seem like we can get through a single news cycle without there being – is Hillary telling us the full truth? So, I mean, well, you know, one, one thing you know, that I, that I Vince, that, that sort of sticks in my mind, though, is everyone keeps saying that she has this penchant for secrecy or she's compulsively secretive as though it's just sort of – a, a personality quirk. She has a penchant right. for secrecy because she's had a lot of stuff to hide. <laughs> this is the other part. Right. Of that's the, yeah. Exactly. And that's and that's why I think voters are suspicious. I mean, some voters are suspicious when anyone who who has that that nagging uh, bias for secrecy is definitely hiding something, or or seems to be this notion that, especially when it comes to the relationship between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department. Boy, they have a lot of questions to answer. As with she's top level aides who are facilitating meetings for donors to the Clinton Foundation directly with the State Department. Those questions need to be answered. And all of this sort of pretending, not just from in the Clinton campaign, but in the press at large, that the email scandal, for instance, has been blown out of proportion. I've never thought that. I've never once been like, oh, we have we've totally overdone coverage of this email scandal. Not even close. No, I mean, you'd think that the possibility you think that a, an FBI investigation of a presidential candidate would be big news no matter what the situation was, never mind if it involved national security information while the candidate was secretary of state. Anyway, it's just, you know, Trump University is going to lead to nuclear war, but Hillary's private server while she's secretary of state is an overblown story. I mean, that's kind of the that's the takeaway that I think you're supposed to get from the media. But Vince, I know you and the rest of the folks, the Daily Caller and Daily Caller Foundation are on it. So thank you for all your good work. Stay on it. Let us know what's going on. Come back soon. Vince Colonese, everybody, uh, executive editor of The Daily Caller. Great to have you, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Buck. The Buck Sexton Show. Hey, team, it's Buck. Have you tried a Casper mattress yet? They are incredible. They're obsessively engineered, and they come at a shockingly fair price for a mattress that brings together technology and comfort to also be a great value is just too much for any of you to pass up. It combines springy latex and supportive memory foams to create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right sink and the perfect 
bounce. Time Magazine named it one of the best inventions of 2015. It is an award-winning mattress that absolutely will not disappoint. Try Casper for 100 nights risk-free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. Free shipping and returns to the U.S. and Canada. And for listeners of this show, you can get a special $50 toward any mattress by going to casper.com slash buck, casper.com slash buck, and using buck 